The new US Open tennis champion, yes, Andy Murray, showed off the trophy in New York this afternoon during a walk in the park. His match last night was, of course, anything but. It took five hours to achieve what he'd been working towards since he was a small boy. Clearly, no one had told him that the great British summer of sport was supposed to have ended yesterday. Our correspondent Robert Moore was there in Central Park when Murray was the centre of attention. The broadest of smiles has replaced his inner torment. The self-doubt has evaporated. A British player has conquered New York. Andy Murray has gone global, telling American Breakfast TV how he kept his focus. Sort of looked at myself in the mirror and said, just give everything on every single point and leave the court with no regrets. The 2012 US Open Men's Singles Championship match. This was Murray's fifth Grand Slam final. And again, he was up against his old friend and rival Novak Djokovic. Murray had an early stranglehold on the match. Come on! What an unbelievable set of tennis. Winning an epic 22-point tiebreak. And then taking the second set as well. But Djokovic fought back. It was soon two sets all. We're going the distance. But after nearly five hours, Murray was serving not just for the title, but for a place in British tennis history. Oh! History is made at the US Open. What a moment this was. After so many tough losses, after questioning his own resilience, Murray had his hands on the trophy. Andy, congratulations. Thrilled for you. The weight of history. 1936, Fred Perry. Did that ever go through your mind in the last five hours? I realised how important a moment it, it was, um, you know, for, for British tennis. Um, you know, it gave me goosebumps a little bit, but I also had to try and focus because the match still, still wasn't done yet. So, yeah, I was very relieved to come through in the end. And, um, yeah, amazing. Uh, it's been the best summer I've had in my life, um, you know, and I hope that, you know, having winning the Olympics and, and now here it will give me a, a good push and motivation to go on and, and work hard and, and try and um, win some, some more big titles. I know it's going to be challenging, but, you know, even if I don't, I'll be able to retire happy now that I got this, uh, this grand slam. Now Murray no longer lives in the shadow of this man, Fred Perry, the last British player to win a grand slam. I'm sure he's smiling from from up there that someone has finally uh, you know managed to, to do it from Britain. Andy Murray has long endured the intense pressure of trying to break a jinx that has lasted since 1936. But after that famous victory last night on this court, there's a new question. Is this just the start? He certainly hopes so. And without the pressure, he can now aim for the Wimbledon title and even the number one world ranking. Last night, after the last spectator had left the stadium, Murray was back on court, this time embracing his girlfriend Kim and taking stock of his stunning achievement. This morning, it was the turn of his mum to get the hug, a woman who has been the greatest influence of all on a player who has just written himself into the history books. Robert Moore, ITV News, in New York. So the big question for Andy Murray now is what next for Britain's number one? He's won his first Grand Slam, so will other titles now follow? Our sports reporter Natalie Perks examines the story so far and how much further Murray could go. It doesn't really bother me what I do, just as long as I'm playing. The hair might have changed, but the determination remains. As a child in Dunblane, it was obvious an extraordinary talent was emerging. Last night, locals shared that same sense of joy and relief that Murray was feeling thousands of miles away. He is a local hero who's made his town and family so proud. We still find it quite strange, even sitting at Wimbledon sometimes, I think, gosh, that's our grandson over there. How did, he, how did he make this big transition, you know, through hard work, dedication, commitment, you name it. Murray showed great promise as a junior, described by his first coach as being unbelievably competitive on the way to his first tournament win at the age of 12. His breakthrough came in 2004 when he was crowned US Open Boys Champion. 
He turned pro a year later, but it wasn't until 2008 that he reached his first Grand Slam final defeat in New York to Roger Federer. Two more final defeats followed in Australia before he lost to Federer again this summer in his first Wimbledon final. But the Olympic champion made it fifth time lucky in a slam when he beat Novak Djokovic in five sets. The presence of this man in his corner has made the difference. Ivan Lendl also lost his first four Grand Slam finals. He went on to win eight. Murray's former coach now says with Lendl's help, this will be the first of many slam victories. I think for Andy, it'll give him huge confidence. It's been building for a long time, you know, coming from the, the Wimbledon final, then a, that Olympic gold medal. Um, you know, and I think the other players now have, you know, we've always known he probably can, but now we know Andy definitely can. I think there'll be more in the pipeline. As a teenager, Murray moved to Spain. The setup here deemed not good enough. British tennis insists now youngsters are being identified and nurtured. Murray's win is already helping. Big impact. I think a lot more kids will probably start playing. And, yeah, a lot more kids will start enjoying tennis more. I want to win a bit more than Andy Murray when I'm older, so hopefully I will. Winning Olympic gold here last month gave Murray the confidence to end that long wait for a Grand Slam victory. After an amazing summer of British sporting success, Murray really now is proof that he can inspire a generation. Natalie Perks, ITV News at Wimbledon Centre Court.